Hello Internet, thanks for joining me again in another video. We're going to be going over how to take uh, clones or uh, actual tissue from a fruit and start the mushroom growing process by using petri dishes. I want to emphasize that this process can be used to clone any kind of mushroom that is saying gourmet or medicinal. You take a small cut which gets placed on a media dish that has the nutrients to keep the mycelium growing until full colonization. Now, I've previously made these plates using uh, malt, yeast, uh, peptone, and agar, or agar, however you want to say it. Um, so they have been prepared and sterilized, and um, I did add a little bit of uh, green food coloring, as you can see. I'm going to be wiping down just the plates that I'm going to be using today and uh, I believe it's just going to be two clones that I'm going to be taking and we're going to see if we can start a video series from beginning to end on how to uh, grow lion's mane which is one of my favorite mushrooms to grow. Some research over the years has shown that lion's mane can improve your cognitive health but the reason why I primarily grow it is because I really like the taste of it. Uh, when I fry it, it has a taste a lot like chicken. I just put it in the hot press with some paprika and some chili powder and it comes out very delicious. Now, after wiping down uh, the plates here, we're going to be um, sterilizing our tools, starting with my blade. Um, the blade that I use is the, an X-Acto knife, which you'll see here in a second. Uh, the X-Acto knife that I bought it came with, I believe, 50 blades, so it's uh, very, very convenient. Um, I'll put the link in the description in case anybody wants to find it online as well. Um, and uh, I have uh, replaced the blade prior to using it just to make sure that we get some clean, fresh cuts. Although I really like this blade, because it is all uh, made of metal and it's very small, it heats up and burns my fingers so what I tend to do is I'll wrap some paper towel around the base of it where I'm going to be holding it to make sure that when I heat up and sterilize the blade with the torch it doesn't burn my fingers as much. I like to place a paper towel down where I'm going to be placing my blade just so that I keep it away from the surface of the table keeping everything as clean as possible. The sample of lion's mane that I have here is from one that I've grown previously. It was one of the best flushes that I've had so I wanted to definitely take a clone of it. I've taken a slice. Uh, as you can see it's already a little bit yellow that's from leaving it out in the air for a while already. Um, but the inside is very fresh so that's where we're going to be taking our clones from. Once again I'm going to wipe my hands down with some isopropyl. I try to do it as I'm touching things because I don't want contamination go from one surface to the other. You can never be too clean. Using my torch, I'm going to heat up the tip of my X-Acto knife until it is completely red hot to ensure that it is as sterile as possible. In between the time that it cools down, which should only take a couple of seconds, I'm going to be opening up the sample of lion's mane to expose the clean part, the fresh tissue that we're going to be taking the sample from. You can see it's red hot here, the tip. This is where we're going to let go. We're going to zoom in a little bit. I want to show you a close up exactly what this process looks like. You can see the inside is a lot wider than the outside because this has not been exposed to the air. This is kind of what it looked like prior to me leaving the slice out for about an hour or so. It is a bit of a tedious process. You're going to see that I struggle with it, um, especially with lion's mane. I find that it, it takes a little bit longer for me to be able to take the, uh, the cut out. If anybody has a better method of doing so, uh, please leave a comment below. I'd love to learn more. I'm um, not an expert in any means. This has all just been things that I've been learning from doing a lot of uh, research through YouTube and uh, as well as on Instagram, learning from the community. Now once I'm able to get the cut out, which uh, took me a little bit there, I go ahead and try to carefully 
pick it out of the sample and place it as centered as I can in the middle of the plate. This is another tedious part because it could get stuck on the blade, but this part didn't give me too much issue with this sample. I, uh, I made sure to show the entire time I didn't speed it up because I wanted to give you an idea of how long it could take just so that you can have patience when you do it, know that eventually you'll be able to get it out. Now in between each cut, I'm going to heat up my blade and get it red hot again because I want to try to minimize any chances of contamination. I know that um, some people go maybe a few cuts in between, I just try to sterilize in between each sample if I can. Now I'm not going to use the same uh, area that I took the previous sample from because that's already been exposed to the air and although it's been in front of my flow hood which is giving me the cleanest air possible, I still like to try to get it from another place where I can peel back and expose some fresh tissue. This part here actually was the perfect area. It was a lot easier than my first time around. As you can see when I zoom in here, I um, struggle still a little bit just to get it peeled back, but once it is exposed, I just uh, nick the end and I pick it up one more time to place in the middle of the Petri dish. And uh, this is where the two samples are completed. We do want to make sure to seal them up, so we'll use some parafilm to wrap each dish. You see me try to wipe down here what I thought was contamination for a second, but it was just a little bit of condensation on the inside of the lid. There's many ways to seal your dishes. Um, I actually previously had these in a Ziploc bag in the fridge without any sealing, but now that I'm going to be colonizing them, I do like to use a parafilm, it is my preferred method, uh, but I know whatever works for you is what you should continue to do until you want to try something else. I always remove my gloves when I'm going to be sealing my dishes. I find it a lot easier to be able to use my fingers without the gloves when I want to peel back the film. It does give me a, a little bit of problem sometimes, but uh, I do wipe down my hands regardless, just like if I had the gloves on, just to make sure they're nice and clean. And uh, I use scissors to cut away from the roll that I have here. Um, what I have found to be the best size when using this type of parafilm or this, this roll is uh, half of a square. Uh, it should be uh, long enough to be able to wrap all around. So this half of a square right here and another half of the square right here should be good enough for two strips. Like I said, it could be a little tedious when you try to peel the, uh, the film back. So I made sure again to not cut away any of this because I want to show you guys in case it gives you any trouble that this can happen to anybody and there's definitely a bit of a technique to peeling it back. Um, and I guess you could say that same thing for wrapping the dishes. Uh, it does take a while to kind of get down how to do it without tearing it. Uh, even now still sometimes I do end up tearing it. We're going to be placing the inside of the film where you peel back from on the outside of the dish. That is the part that was not exposed to the air. That should be the cleanest part. Now I go in sections as you saw, I take a little bit of a strip, make sure I stretch it out, make sure it's not stretched out too much and I pinch back on the edge to seal the end of it. We're going to repeat the process for the second dish here. I always like to make sure to take at least two samples from every clone. That ensures that if one plate gets contaminated, I will still have one more plate that I can use to repeat the process. This precaution has definitely saved me many times where I get contamination across several plates, but one just happens to make it. Now these two samples are completed, we want to make sure that we label them appropriately. I like to put the name of the culture as well as the date in which we took the sample. But this is a matter of preference, you can use any method you like. This also goes uh, towards where you want to put it on the dish. I used to put it on the top 
but I find that I really like to see the culture when, uh, when it grows out, so I started labeling on the side of the dish, and uh, it's a lot easier. The only issue is whenever you remove the parafilm, if you want to seal it back up, you have to write it all over again. But it doesn't take any extra time, it's not, uh, not anything that holds me back. And when I stack them all, I also think it looks nice to be able to see them, uh, which culture is which, um, when I have them all in a one big stack. When I write TC here, it uh, stands for tissue culture or tissue clone. It's just a reminder of the fact that it is not from another dish that we took this sample from, but from actual mushroom tissue. And uh, within about a week to two weeks, you should start to see the initial signs of growth. And then in about four weeks, you'll get it to uh, where you see here on this picture. This is actually the exact uh, dish that we took the samples from. I just had some time to be able to finish uh, filming what it looked like at the end. So I hope you enjoyed this process. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe, like, maybe leave a comment, and uh, catch me on the next video. Have a good one.